Now at 10, first responders in the Pine Belt continue to mourn the loss of volunteer firefighter Philip Allen of McGee. How those who knew Allen remember him straight ahead. Plus, from Australia to Mississippi, how a Southern Miss professor and acclaimed field hockey star is representing the USA. Coming up. And it's a quiet night across the area, but we got some warm weather this weekend. We'll talk more about it in a few minutes, but it's a 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Taylor Curette. Servant, brother, and helper. That's how people in the community who knew Philip Allen describe him. The McGee volunteer firefighter who also volunteered with fire departments in Mount Olive and Seminary was killed Wednesday when he was hit by a car as he was responding to an accident on Highway 49. Allen worked as a technician for the Covington County Schools Technology Department. You're not used to losing a brother, especially in the line of duty. Um, it's, it's tough either way, line of duty or not, uh, especially one like Philip that was so close to you that does so much for everybody in the community. He originally entered as a contract person and worked kind of quasi-maintenance and technology, but he really became a student of it and learned everything he could about it so he could be a help to teachers. Funeral arrangements have been set for Allen. Visitation will be Friday from 4 to 9 p.m., at Colonial Chapel Funeral Home in McGee. The funeral service will be Saturday at noon at Corinth Baptist Church in McGee. Now over to our first alert weather team. Patrick, I know we saw a couple showers today. Anything we need to know about overnight? Yeah, for tonight, we're going to stay pretty quiet here across the area. That's some good news because the past several nights, we've had a lot of heavy rain and thunderstorms, but not tonight. 72 degrees out there as we take a live look at the campus of USM. We're looking south along Highway 49 back towards Forest General Hospital. Beautiful evening across uh, Hattiesburg. We got a few little sprinkles still left going on up around our northern counties over around McGee. A quick little shower going on and just to the east of Bay Springs, but outside of that, things are quieting down. Every Everybody right now, for the most part, is sitting into the low 70s. 72 in the Hub City now, 72 in Petal. Uh, it's 73 in Laurel, 76 in State Line, and 74 out towards Fox Worth. But as we look ahead to your day tomorrow, we're going to start off your day with temperatures into the upper 60s. But it's going to be another hot afternoon. Temperatures quickly jumping up into the low 90s. Definitely looking hot for your day tomorrow. Now, we'll tell you how long this hot weather is going to last. Coming up in my full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Patrick. Well, today the Mississippi Institutions of Higher Learning approved Southern Miss's new provost pick. The university announced Tuesday that Dr. Lance Nail had been selected as the new provost and senior vice president for academic affairs. The IHL approved Nail's new salary at $365,000 per year with a 12-month contract, according to the IHL's board book. Nail will start the position July 1st. This summer, a USM professor will step outside of the classroom to join the U.S. National Field Hockey Team five years after his last game. Dr. Tristan Clemens met with our Trey Howard to talk about his decision to don the stars and stripes. Southern Miss is home to hundreds of student athletes. But what about faculty athletes? Meet Dr. Tristan Clemens assistant professor at USM School of Polymer Science and goalkeeper for Team USA's men's national field hockey team. You know, I'm just, just excited to, to challenge myself again, right? Clemens grew up in Australia, where he played for that national team from 2011 to 2018. That was an amazing experience, got to travel the whole world playing um, with Australia for a long period of that time. We were the world number one ranked team, so it was an exciting program to be a part of for sure. After 2018, Clemens retired from field hockey and moved to the States to continue his education, putting the sport he loved behind him for good, or so he thought. You know, there's not much field hockey in the U.S., right, you know, especially for, for male athletes. So I thought that probably the opportunity had passed and, and I was content with what I'd done for Australia. But, you know, when the opportunity came out to sort of help the, the U.S. national team and be involved in that elite program again, I had to jump at it and, and see if I could still do it. With that competitive spirit still burning, last year, Clemens agreed to help coach the team, but Team USA head coach Harry Seen presented him with a unique offer. 
my dad's actually from Michigan, so I have dual citizenship with the US and Australia. And he said, well, you haven't played for Australia for four years, so that means you can now play for the US if you wanted to. And he's like, I don't want you to coach, I want you to actually play. This summer, Clemens will wear the number 40. Now a father, he and his wife Claire believe the number will serve as motivation as it will represent his age once he reaches his ultimate goal. But I'm definitely you know, hopeful that I can go all the way to LA 2028 if the body holds up and the team still needs me and I'm actually doing a good job. So. In Hattiesburg, Trey Howard, WDAM7, on your side. Clemens will make his debut for Team USA this June at the Pan American Hockey Fives World Cup Qualifier. 20 new people are officially United States citizens after undergoing the naturalization process in Hattiesburg this morning. The new U.S. citizens took an oath of allegiance, discussed the ruling of their applications, and were presented with certificates that show their new citizenship. On average, 800,000 people with a green card apply for citizenship through the naturalization process every year, while only about 20 percent will be approved. Those who are already U.S. citizens at the ceremony were happy to welcome in the new members of our country. Watching the, the, the people uh, who come through the, the process and seeing the smiles on their faces, they've really accomplished something and they're proud of it. The naturalization process takes two years on average, so this day was celebratory for not only the new citizens. A quick traffic notice for Hattiesburg residents. Right now, a lane is closed on a portion of Highway 49. Contractors closed the right southbound lane from O'Farrell Street to Arlington Loop at 6 p.m. this evening. Crews will pour a new concrete curb and gutter along Highway 49. The lane should be open again by 6 a.m. Friday morning. Lamar County is one step closer to having its very own tennis complex. Today, the Lamar County Board of Supervisors awarded a contract for a company to begin construction. Sporting, con sporting Contractors Unlimited received a unanimous vote from the board, but Supervisor Mitch Brent says their work is not quite done. This is about a $3 million project when you talk about the courts and the clubhouse. Uh, well, we've got about two thirds of that. Really want to thank our, our board for getting behind this and pushing and pushing and pushing. It's been a long time coming. We had a timetable for the complex, but officials expect construction on the facility to begin in the near future. We're in the midst of graduation season, and for students in Covington County, this is their weekend to shine. Tonight, the class of 2023 at Mount Olive High School had its graduation ceremony. It took place at the school's multi-purpose center. Tomorrow night, seniors at Collins High School will graduate at 6 p.m. at the Jones College Gymnasium. And on Saturday, Seminary High's class of 23 will get their diplomas at 10 a.m. also at Jones College. We are so excited. When they start kindergarten, our goal is to re help them reach this day. And we're so excited, and I know parents are very excited as well because they've had to have a lot of hard work to get the kids to this. All told, 106 students across Covington County are graduating this year. Still ahead, we'll introduce you to our last Golden Apple Award winner of the school year, who's hitting the target for her students' details. After the break.